In this video, I'm going to show you the games we play to practice addition and subtraction skills. My favorite two games for introducing addition and subtraction concepts are Orchard Toys Bus Stop and Sum Swamp. In Bus Stop, each player is a bus with passengers boarding or alighting the bus based on whether or not they land on an addition or subtraction sign. Then they use the passenger tokens as manipulatives to fill their bus. The player with the most passengers when the bus returns to the terminal is the winner. Children at this stage are or will be introduced to addition and subtraction, so I'm only going to focus on games whose sums are below 20. Numbers small enough for kids to still use physical manipulatives if need be. I'm Leanne and I've taught kids for almost 20 years. I help parents have fun while teaching their kids early academic skills they need. So if this is something you're interested in, consider subscribing. I'll post links to all the games and more. Don't forget to check out the description box below after the video. Sum Swamp is a game that uses addition and subtraction as obvious parts of the gameplay. It's another race to the finish game, but there's the variable of the symbol dice which determines whether you add or subtract. Also, there are special spaces on the board, even or odd numbers to roll, numbers to do further addition and subtraction to get to your final space and so on. In the game, there's an endless loop, which, as its name suggests, could keep you going for a while, which means lots of practice. But since we play games every day and night, I know my kids get plenty of practice already. So as a family, we don't play Endless Loop and this makes it a quick game under 10 minutes. If you've already got some ideas on how to add math into your family games, click the like button. One of the games that deserve special mention is Enchanted Forest. This game is a magical twist on the classic memory match. You are an explorer searching for treasures hidden in the Enchanted Forest. The player that finds the most treasures that the king seeks wins the game. In the actual game, there are two versions of the rules. One, you may move in any direction the sum total of both dice. Or you can move your counter forward one die and then back the other. And that actually works out to be subtraction, which is the difference between both dice. The rules also state that when you roll doubles, you can invoke magic to move your counter to any tree to peep at what's underneath. Question of the day! What video on game schooling would you like to watch? Would you like to see a game school shelf tour? Or how we organize our games? Perhaps you would like to find out how we make time to play all our games? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe so you know when it comes out. This is 4-Way Countdown. The goal is to be the first to flip up all your number keys from 1 to 10. The way you do that is by using arithmetic on the numbers rolled on two dice. You can add, subtract, multiply or divide. For this age group, I start off with addition and introduce subtraction further along, but I do allow my third grader to use multiplication and division to get to her tiny number. Now, the next two games have woven addition and subtraction smartly into the gameplay. And that's because there's an element of autonomy and options for the players to decide their moves. In Sleeping Queens, the goal is to collect as many Sleeping Queens by exchanging kings for them. The way you get a king card is by drawing them from the pile. You draw fresh cards from the draw pile by using the cards dealt in your hand to make viable equations. The more cards you use, the more cards you can draw, the more opportunities to get a king card. This way, the kids are practicing addition or subtraction to make a balanced equation. If you don't have the actual Sleeping Queen cards, be sure to check out this video on how we use playing cards to play Sleeping Queens. So you may be wondering, what can I do right now to help my kids work out those equations faster while we're playing games? If you want to learn some of the tricks we use to do mental addition super quick, don't forget to check out our video on mental addition strategies right here. For more flexible mathematical thinking, we enjoy playing Math Dice Junior. It comes in a little bag like this. Essentially, it's also a race to the finish game, but the number of moves is determined by how many dice you decide to use to reach your target number. You roll the target dice first, 
which gives you the number that you must achieve. Then you roll the five colored dice. With these five numbers, your aim is to use as many of them to make the target number. If you use two dice, you move two spaces. If you use five dice, you can move five spaces. And I have seen how this has made kids think about how to maximize the number of dice instead of assuming to add two numbers together to make the sum. Check out the videos listed in the description box on using games to teach kids and I can't wait to see you in a future one.